Live and Panhandle Strong Together. This is News 13 this weekend at 5.30. Good evening and thanks for joining us on News 13 this weekend at 5.30. I'm Madeline Bierster. Tess Rowland has the evening off. We are continuing to learn more about a late night shooting in Jackson County that has taken the life of a Graceville man. And now officials believe they have a suspect in this homicide. Officials with the Graceville Police Department confirmed that one man has died after a shooting at a local fast food restaurant around 530 last night. When they arrived at the scene, they discovered an African American male who apparently died of a single gunshot wound to the chest. Officials now say they do have a person of interest that they're attempting to contact and speak with. They're also asking for the public's help. If anyone has any information about this shooting that took place at the Hardee's in Graceville, they're urged to contact the Jackson County Sheriff's Office. More details are being released from another investigation tonight out of Jackson County after human remains were found in Alfred on Wednesday. Officials believe they have now identified the remains. Wednesday, one Jackson County man was clearing a wooded area of his property and discovered human skeletal remains. The sheriff's office isn't releasing a lot more of a specific location because they don't want to compromise their investigation. However, the following day on Thursday, the sheriff's office continued to search the property and found other evidence and additional skeletal remains scattered throughout the woods. Missing persons cases have now led to investigators identifying a potential subject for these remains. It's not confirmed who the remains belong to, and the investigation is ongoing, but we will provide any updates that become available. Early this morning, around 3 a.m., officers with Panama City Beach Police responded to a crash involving a pedestrian. Once officers arrived, they found a white vehicle was traveling down Thomas Drive when it hit a pedestrian as he was crossing the road near Sunbird Condos. The pedestrian was identified as Brandon Overstreet. When Overstreet was struck by the car, he sustained life-threatening injuries and was transported to Bay Medical and is listed as in very critical condition. This case is still being investigated by the Traffic Homicide Unit. Thanksgiving is typically one of the busiest travel times of the year, but during the pandemic, those numbers won't look as high as usual. Here in Bay County, leaders at Northwest Florida Beaches International Airport share what they expect ahead of the holiday. This is kind of going to be a little different, so we're not really sure what's going to, how it's going to be, but we know that the weekends, are, the weekend on the return is usually the biggest. Um, so we're kind of counting on Saturday and Sunday being pretty busy. Director of Northwest Florida Beaches International Airport, Parker McClellan says although numbers are slightly down, he does still expect to see people traveling through the airport this week. He says it's important that people follow all the safety protocols while traveling. Masks are required. They're required by the airlines, so we work very hard to uh, continue that through the process. So when you check in at the airlines, you need to have a mask. When you go through the checkpoint, you have to have a mask. And then when you get on the plane, you have to wear a mask on the duration of your flight. As far as packing goes, McClellan says to check the TSA website for exactly what you are allowed to carry. We'll also post that link on our website, mypanhandle.com. Well, the Boys and Girls Club of Bay County's Christmas tree lot is officially open to the public. As of 10 a.m. today, the tree lot across from Bill Kramer Chevrolet in Panama City is open and won't close until 8 p.m. each evening. And the trees, they're going fast. There were over 600 trees to start today, but over 300 were sold just before 2 p.m. The Boys and Girls Club CEO Hank Hill says without the community's help, they wouldn't have been able to pull this off. 80 volunteers alone helped unload the trees just yesterday. Hill says they will be open until the last tree is sold, and there are more shipments to come within the next few weeks. Today is our opening of the tree lot. Really, it's the, the benefits uh, the, go to the Boys and Girls Club so we can mentor kids and, and our after school, our summer, and our out of school programs. Hill says they are always looking for volunteers to help around the lot, packing trees and helping residents carry them to their vehicles. They typically run out of trees by the second week of December, so if you want to pick out a tree this Christmas, you may want to act fast. Coming up, COVID-19 is known to affect those with underlying health conditions more than others. We'll tell you how many people with diabetes in particular are taking extra precautions during this time. And after two years of devastation from Hurricane Michael, one local church is finally seeing some progress and rehabilitating their sanctuary. We'll tell you what it'll take to bring it back to its former glory.
We have a dry cold front rolling over tonight, meaning slightly cooler temperatures tomorrow afternoon. But when are we going to see the next rain chances? We'll be talking in near Thanksgiving time frame next. Sports with Emma Stamps and First Alert Meteorologist Melissa Thomas. COVID-19 is known to affect those with underlying health conditions more than others. And this can be anyone with asthma, diabetes, or other health complications. As Nextstar's Kim Posey tells us, how many people with diabetes in particular are taking extra precautions during this time? Doctors saying that people with diabetes are at an increased risk of severe illness if they get coronavirus, and that is why it is so important to manage their health. I've been a diabetic for 51 years. Rick Davis lives with type 1 diabetes, but says it doesn't slow him down. Don't think that it's going to stop you from living a full life. COVID-19, though, has caused him to take extra precautions. We've really cut down on our social interaction. Davis, like so many others with underlying health conditions, is at a greater risk of severe illness if he gets COVID-19. I tell my patients that the risk of catching the disease or the virus isn't necessarily higher in, in diabetic patients, but if you get the um, COVID virus, you're definitely at increased risk for death, dying, severe illness, and a prolonged stay in the hospital. 
Dr. Sarah Bull is an endocrinologist at Presbyterian St. Luke's Medical Center in Denver. This virus seems to have an affinity for the cells that produce insulin. She says there is also some indication internationally that COVID-19 could be causing new cases of diabetes. For example, patients have been well controlled and then some, suddenly come in in a diabetic crisis or people who are borderline diabetics who now present with new diabetes. She says it's important for patients to manage their health, stay on top of their blood sugars and take precautions. Davis says he's doing everything he can. His two sisters, his father and his mother have all had COVID. It, my mother is still in the hospital with it, as a matter of fact. As he worries about his mother, he is reminded of the need to protect himself. When Hurricane Michael hit and damaged many large buildings across Bay County, that included many places of worship. Now Harvest Worship Center, one of the many churches affected, is finally making progress on rebuilding their sanctuary. Senior Pastor John Ramsey said he's looking forward to rebuilding the place he's called home for so many years, but said it's going to take a lot of work and a lot of money to make it beautiful once again. For 25 years, the 11,000 square foot sanctuary was where they worshipped, but he says it first started as a shelter. We had used this building for many, many hurricanes. A matter of fact, before they built Tommy Smith Elementary, this was the Red Cross Hurricane Shelter for many storms. And we rode them out fine. I think in Hurricane Opal, we lost some gutters. It blew out the sign. You know, we had some small damage. None of us anticipated what was going to happen in Hurricane Michael. Ramsey, his family, and church members rode the storm out inside the sanctuary, like he said. He says the experience was scary, but he knows God saw them through it, just as he expects he will guide them through the rebuilding process. We'll have more on Ramsey's plans to rebuild at 10. Now, your first alert storm team forecast with meteorologist Melissa Thomas. The sun has set on the Perry and Young Tower Cam uh, underneath a pretty heavy cloud deck. You see a little bit of the color of the horizon still in the distance, but plenty of cloud coverage around and we'll keep some clouds around throughout the evening. But 73 degrees is the current temperature. 61 is that dew point. North north winds five miles per hour, and that's going to help drive in some dry air and clear up some of that cloud coverage. A little bit of rain showers off to our west near and around Destin, but across the panhandle we are free of the rainfall. We have relatively stable air that's going to keep just stabilizing as that north wind drives in more dry air. Our weather watchers today recording some warm temperatures for this November time. We've got 79 by Lennon Grand Ridge, James Brooks 72 in Willis, Robert Taylor in 76 in Fountain, Rolling Pines by Don Finley, a very warm 80 degrees, and 76 by Jack Flaws in Freeport, very, very warm. And across the next week, we're not going to get much cooler than that each afternoon, only slightly to start the week. Then we warm back up. Your temperatures now, though, are 70 in Blountstown, 69 in Mariana, 71 in Tuniac Springs, 73 in Panama City, 71 in Apalachicola, and tonight, we're going to keep some cloud coverage around, some skies in between, and those lows getting into the mid-50s for your inland area, lower 60s along the coast. Calm winds, if at all, coming from the north-northwest around 5 miles per hour. Now tomorrow, we will be slightly cooler. This dry cold front rolling over tonight, allowing us to get down into the low to mid-70s tomorrow, a little cooler than these mid to upper 70s we've had. Slightly cooler sunshine around, north winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. The beach forecast with those northerly winds is going to make for a beautiful wave heights, approximately a foot. Your UV index 5, the flags flying yellow, and the boating forecast is going to be a little roughed up with north winds 10 to 15 knots, seas 2 to 3 feet. Bays, a moderate chop, but otherwise sunshiny skies. There is the cold front that rolls over tonight. Notice all of the unsettled weather remains to the north. We keep dry skies, maybe, maybe a stray shower. And then tomorrow through Tuesday, this area of high pressure is going to be in control. Northerly winds, mild temperatures, not much cooler after that cold front passes. And then moving across the week into Wednesday morning is going to be another cold front that will set to approach the area. Unfortunately, at Wednesday, very early morning, much of the weather to the north at that time frame. Then as we move into Wednesday afternoon, we'll start to see in the western panhandle the unsettled weather moving through. We could see a strong thunderstorm or two with this severe threat is low at this time, and then it will move through out the Wednesday afternoon, evening time hours, and then Thanksgiving. Unfortunately, Thursday afternoon, we're going to be tapering these showers off. So 
as much as the northerly winds on the back end of that can start to help taper it off with hopefully clear us up for Thursday afternoon time frame. But notice the temperatures are still mild. And then Friday evening we may have a stray shower because across the weekend is another cold front that is setting up a much more potent one. This could be a significant cold front. It will bring showers and thunderstorms across the weekend, unfortunately, but it also might bring some of our coolest temperatures we've seen all season. Timing and exact temperature drop is a little uncertain this far out, but there are clues to a significant drop. There is the seven day coastal week ahead across the week, unusual, unseasonably warm in the mid to upper 70s. Those showers and thunderstorms Wednesday tapering off on Thursday, Thanksgiving Day, and the coldest morning being Tuesday morning with your lows in the 40s and then we warm back up and then possibly we'll be keeping an eye on it and bringing you updates that really strong cold front. Melissa, I'm really hoping it doesn't rain on Thanksgiving. Fingers crossed for that for sure. So you're really hoping for that tapering off that morning. There's a chance. There's a chance it all that unsettled weather tapers off Thursday morning and by the afternoon time for those outside Thanksgiving plans. It'll be good news. Make it happen for us. All right, thanks, Emma. We saw several different great plays during the high school football playoffs this week. That's right, and one really stood out. I'll show you our play of the week sponsored by Southern Chevrolet dealers next in sports. with Emma Stamps.
Welcome back, everyone. Three area high school football teams remain on the hunt for their respective state championship titles. One of those, the Vernon Yellow Jackets. It's from their region semifinal game against Northview. We find our play of the week, sponsored by Southern Chevrolet Dealers. In the third quarter, Vernon leads 28-13. Chiefs looking to cut that lead. Caden Odom launches it downfield right to the guys in white. EJ Redis brings it down with one hand, secures it after it bounces off him. Slowed it down for you here. What an incredible interception right there by the junior. Vernon goes on to win this one 34-19. They move on to the region finals where they'll hope to break Baker's perfect season. South Walton football fell in a close playoff game to Mariana in their Friday night matchup. Several seniors playing in their last game with the Seahawks. One of them, Levin Magruder. He's our Scholar Athlete of the Week, sponsored by Perry and Young. Magruder is South Walton's center, and he's started at the position the past three years. Seahawks head coach Phil Tiza said he beats people with his intelligence and technique, making him a great leader for that offensive line. He's also involved in campus clubs. He's a percussionist in the concert band and a member of the National Honor Society. He has a 3.8 GPA as a dual enrolled student. I mean, it's just something that I have the opportunity to do, and if I can do it, I might as well uh, go ahead and do all these kind of clubs and band and football because it's going to make me look better at, on college applications and that kind of thing. But also, I just have the time, so I might as well. There's no re nothing really stopping me. We will learn more about Magruder tonight at 10. To nominate a senior to be our Scholar Athlete of the Week, just head to our website, mypanhandle.com. The North Bay Haven football team had more seniors on its roster this year than the program ever has, and that group got to end their time as Buccaneers in a special way, playing on the campus of their school on their home field for the Webb Seafood Oyster Bowl against Franklin County, something they were never sure was going to happen. They told us year in and year out, like every year they promised that we would, they promised they would, they promised we would, and then to actually see it happen and materialize is, is, is crazy. It's something really cool. The North Bay Haven football team made program history on Saturday, playing its first on-campus game at their new home field. The slogan here is high expectations, high achievement, so I wanted to make sure this field was perfect. Coaches and parents spent hours on the field. It's been a work in progress all season, putting up scaffolding for a temporary press box, painting the end zone's checkerboard with the numbers of each senior. It's unbelievable. It's, it can't even begin to describe how much has been done for us for, for nothing, just, just because. Buccaneers head coach Andy Siegel said the bowl game was his way to honor the senior class that stuck with it despite the adversity they faced over their four seasons. They don't have any quit this bunch. You know, they, they'll fight 10. If you look at our games this year, every game came down to the last play except for two. And, and these guys just didn't give up. They're fighters. They, they, they got hearts of champions, and I just love every one of them. Each player walking away from their time as a Buccaneer with a takeaway from the day. For John Hardman, it was scoring his first touchdown in a black and blue uniform. I just want to come out here do my thing and leave off on a good note. This coach always tells us we're going to remember this for the rest of our life this day, and I know I will. And to cap off the day, the Buccaneers beat Franklin County 42-7, finishing the season with a win. And this did count as a regular season game because of the policies the FHSEA put in place this season due to the coronavirus. That's all the time we have for sports. Don't go anywhere. Melissa will have a last check on the weather after the break.
and the community is helping him to find gifts. The South Walton Fire District has partnered with the Care and Share organization for the past 20 years, hosting the Angel Tree program. Community members can select through children's names, ranging anywhere from newborns to 17-year-olds. Sammy Sanchez, the South Walton Fire District's fire marshal, says he thinks they play a big part during the holidays, but without the community's help, it wouldn't be possible. Sanchez says a year has not gone by where a child through the Angel Tree program has not received a gift. And for how to participate, visit our website, mypanhandle.com. Melissa, isn't that so cute? It's oh, such a sweet that program. Is full of Christmas cheer. Oh my goodness, that's so sweet. Oh. <laughs> well, if, speaking of holiday cheer, hopefully we keep the holiday cheer around the Thanksgiving afternoon as the showers and unsettled weather from Wednesday will hopefully start to taper off in a rather quick manner in the AM time frame. But we stay warm, even with that unsettled weather, a more potent cold front lining up to possibly roll around next weekend. So this seven day has a little bit of everything from pure sunshine the next couple of days, slightly cooler temperatures, warming up, rain, break, Rain, possibly cooler temperatures, stronger cold front. Back to you, Maddie. All right, thank you for being with us for news tonight. We will be back at 10 o'clock, so stick with us. See you later.